Welcome. Now we begin the trek to Pentecost, May 23rd, 2021. We pray that you are as excited as we are about the opportunity to worship together in person, in-house. We also pray you have read the guidelines for in-person worship and will help us comply with those guidelines which have been approved by the Conference Committee on Safe Worship. This is the fourth Sunday after Easter and the first Sunday in May of 2021. As it is the first Sunday, we will be distributing pre-packaged communion elements to be consumed collectively collectively as the Mission Bell family of God. Pastor Doug will show you how to open the package. We will collect empty packages after the communion prayer at the appropriate time. Sometimes deadlines just kind of slip right on by and unfortunately... That means not all content from our regular service is going to be presented today. The good news is there is music. There is the message and the Bible readings. If you're wondering, we also posted this early. So if you still want to get communion live at church, you have time. Please remember to pray for those on our prayer list and pray for our churches. Remember, if you are attending the in-person service as well, please mask up and follow CDC guidelines so that we may continue to have in-person services going forward. Celebrations. Yesterday was Felicity Nicholson's birthday, Terry Reed's birthday is tomorrow, and Lauren Heitbreder's birthday is on Wednesday. Helen and Gary Seba enjoy an anniversary of many, many years this Friday. The New Testament lesson, Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that go down that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candake, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. 
How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the passage of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silence. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. today, your faithfulness and giving makes it possible for Mission Bell Church to continue in ministry and missional outreach. As God provides for you, your gifts to Mission Bell are likewise a gift from God. You can give through the mail, drop off your gift in the locked mailbox near the office, online, or by direct withdrawal through your bank. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Today's communion scripture, John 15, verses 5 through 8. Jesus, the true vine. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Receive of the body and blood of him who is the true vine. Let us always remain in Christ Jesus, for alone we are nothing, but in him we are everything. Today's message, Pastor Doug Reynolds. Listen to the leading of God. It's May 2nd, 2021, and I'm recording from my office at church. Uh, our Wi-Fi went down, uh, and that... <laughs> That just complicates things all over the place. But uh, still, you know, we trust God to mend the broken fences. Anyway, so uh, the message today is it's a whole new world. Uh, Acts 8, 26 through 40 is our uh, part of our reading this morning. And, and John 15, 1 through 8. But I'm going to focus on uh, Acts because... Uh, Acts of the Apostles offers us uh, an, some interesting insights for today. So, uh, I entitled it, uh, A Whole New World. What if we could change the world we live in? Create a world where warring factions laid down their weapons and found peaceful means of resolving their conflict? A, a world where the color of your skin or the place where you grew up didn't determine your value as a human being. A world where God's children were free to work, vote, free to travel, embrace the future, a future filled with positive opportunity. A, a world where we cared for our environment and, and we protected it from ruin. It's God's great creation. Well, in 1992, uh, Disney released a film, uh, an animated film called Aladdin. Alan Menken wrote a song uh, for the movie that served as both the theme song and the love song between Aladdin and Jasmine. It was a, it was a cute movie, a whole new world. This is part of the lyrics. A whole new world, a fantastic point of view. No one to tell us no, or where to go, or say we're only dreaming. A whole new world, a dazzling place we never knew. But when we're way up here, it's crystal clear that now we're in a whole new world. A whole new world. People keep saying, I can't wait for the pandemic to be over, for people to get vaccinated, to get back to normal. And you and I have had this conversation before about there will be no normal. We're not going back. Others, others agree that there's nothing we can, we can do. We're, we're headed for something new, something that we haven't known before. It's not natural. Uncle Virgil might say, ain't nothing natural about the unnatural. And you can't make something right that is way too wrong. Best you can do is call on God to set his world back on its feet. Even when it comes to the business of church, uh, I hear people talking and, and we're trying to use old thoughts and ways of thinking to fill the gaps for the future. What would happen if we adopted a new philosophy a whole new world, a fantastic point of view. What would happen if we didn't have physical buildings and walls that separated us from the world around us? What would happen if we took the church to the streets? You know, Jesus preached in homes, hillsides, seashores, city squares. He preached wherever there were people, roadside. When I was a kid, we didn't have a car. I never thought it, uh, much about it uh, 
or that what I was missing. Although we, we never traveled very far, my life was filled with wonderment, fantasy, what ifs, an old sand pile left over from building, a hayfield out back, and God's beauty, my mind created the unknown. And then my parents sold the house that they built and got a mobile home and a car. Well, since my parents had been restricted in travel, no car, they must have adopted a whole new philosophy, a whole new way of looking at the world around them, a whole new world. When you, when you have a car, you live in a mobile home park, you don't have grass to mow. You don't have to worry about those kinds of things or a house to take care of. So during the spring, the summer and the fall, wow. When the weekend rolled around, we were gone. We were gone at the drop of a hat, gone on a journey. With a mattress in the back of the station wagon for my parents, a cooler with food, and uh, my sleeping bag and a mosquito net, we were off exploring the world. Well, exploring our part of the world, but it was a, a whole new world. We were always headed towards some place we hadn't been before. It's kind of that way in Acts of the Apostles, especially chapter 8, 26 through 40. You know, life changed for the apostles uh, and the disciples after Christ's death. And even in the midst of trial and tribulation, they were servants of the resurrected Christ and called to share the good news. God sent them out to Jerusalem, out from Jerusalem into the world to testify. Jerusalem was their safe place. But now they're sent out. They not only testified to their Jewish brothers and sisters, they went into Greek providences. They went to Samaria. They, they witnessed to Samaritans. They spoke of the power of God, the forgiveness of sin through the resurrection of Christ and the amazing power of the Holy Spirit. Well, there was a group of them. And one day as they were headed back to Jerusalem to the home church, Philip receives a word from God, a word from the Lord. Arise and go south to the road that descends from Jerusalem to Gaza, a des desert road. Well, while doing as the Lord asked, what he in instructed of Philip, Philip encountered a man from Ethiopia. He was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of, of Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch was in charge of the queen's treasury and he was on his way to Jerusalem uh, to worship. He, he had stopped his chariot along the road and was sitting there reading from the prophet Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah uh, held meaning to him, but he was trying to understand what it said. Well, the Holy Spirit spoke to Philip, check out this chariot and the guy that's in there. He looks like a foreigner. Well, as Philip approached the chariot, he heard the man reading from the book of Isaiah. And he asked, do you understand what you're reading? <laughs> the eunuch probably understood some of it, but the eunuch hadn't had experience with Jesus, the fulfillment of the prophecy. And so the eunuch said to him, not, not unless someone explains it to me, it guides me. So Philip sat down with the man and explained the passage. And then Philip showed how Christ fulfilled the prophecy and he preached Jesus to the eunuch. Well, as they were traveling down the road, uh, they'd started up again, they ran into some water, not, not in the road, but along the road. And the eunuch asked Philip, can I be baptized? And Philip said, do you believe with your whole heart? And the eunuch said to Philip, I believe with my whole heart that Jesus is the Son of God. And Philip said, then you may be baptized. They went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch. 
the eunuch was baptized. An Ethiopian baptized by Philip. Philip, it says in the scriptures, was then snatched away by the Holy Spirit and deposited along Aztots. And from there to Caesarea, he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ in all the small towns and villages and anyone who would listen. In my experience, we don't spend much time discussing the Apostle Philip's call to ministry or, or the place within uh, the first century church that he filled. Yet, here's a prime example of how God called Philip to testify and then equipped him with the Holy Spirit to baptize the eunuch and grant the Ethiopian wholeness. And who knows from there where that Ethiopian went and how he served? We don't know. The story doesn't fulfill that part. But Philip, a fisherman, was offered the opportunity to serve Christ, the risen Christ, the Son of God. What what would it take for any one of us to give up the security of our careers, follow God's leading? What would it take to speak boldly without fear of negative consequences? Nobody judging us. I've been blessed to know a few Phillips in my time. I think of Robert. Robert was a drug addict. He was living in a homeless shelter. He saw his life as meaningless. He had sunk so far down into life's darkest place that he saw no way out. He was just living day to day, picking up whatever he could. And then one day, while walking along the railroad tracks down by the river, he saw another homeless man stumble, fall, fall onto the tracks just as the wheels of the last railroad car were passing. The last car caught him, threw him off balance under the wheel, mangled his, his arm, uh, severed it. He was bleeding out. And Robert, without thinking, made a tourniquet out of a rope belt and stemmed the flow of the blood until the ambulance arrived. It, it, that would be a nice ending, but unfortunately, the man was HIV positive and he had gone untreated. Robert became infected. His life couldn't get much worse and then it was. Who could he turn to? Who could he turn to? And then from his childhood, he remembered that God is always listening. Who, who knows where he heard that? But he did. He heard those words in his mind that God was available. If God would give him a few more years, a few more years to live, he would change the trajectory of his life. So he started helping at the Christian shelter. He, he heard the word preached and literally became the word. Over the next few years, he received treatment. He got a job at the Christian shelter. He married a woman who worked at the shelter with him. She was a Christian. She was willing to give her life in ministry with Robert, regardless of his illness, or his background. Robert entered a whole new world. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. He began ministering in the streets and served in the most desperate of situations. He was a disciple of Jesus Christ with a mission to save the least, the lost, and the lonely. I met Robert when he was applying for a position as associate pastor. The problem was the church didn't get him. They, they wanted to reach out to the inner city, but they didn't understand that this was not the world they lived in. They would have to adopt a whole new world, 
if they were to serve in that circumstance. Unfortunately, they couldn't. Their minds were blocked. They didn't see that Jesus was the true salvation for all people, drug addicts, alcoholics, the most disillusioned of all people, people in prison, people living on the street. I think of Robert once in a while, and I wonder, because I know now he's deceased, but I wonder how many lives did he change while he was serving God? That's a question. How many lives can we change if we adopt a whole new world of thinking, a whole new world? If we open ourselves to the love of Jesus Christ, if we open ourselves and, and we're not worried about what people say about us or, or what they think about us, but if they hear Christ preached, God will use that. The Holy Spirit will bind it. That's what we're called to do, folks. Will you pray with me? Lord, help us. Help us to move beyond our fears. Help us to move beyond our sense of comfort. Help us to move beyond the walls of the church and truly preach the good news of Jesus Christ to the least, the lost, and the lonely. Thank you, Father, for having saved me, pulled me out of the muck and the mire. Thank you. May your blessing be on all those who hear this message upon Mission Bell and our first Sunday back for regular worship. In Jesus' name. Amen and Amen.
Our blessing today, give God the glory for us being together in person once again. May God contain COVID-19 and its variant strains. We have lost brothers and sisters to the virus. May God put a prayer hedge of protection around our children and youth, as well as our adult generations. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, shoes, power, uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Praise God the Father, Christ his Son, and the Spirit of God among us. Amen and amen.